Hi guys, this is IGCSC O-Level Chemistry, paper 22, March 2019, question 1. Pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. What happens to the water particles when water boils? They gain energy, yes, and move apart, yes. That is why a liquid turns to steam. So this is correct. They gain energy and stay close together. So if they are gaining energy, then they will have to move further apart. They cannot stay closer together. So gain of energy is correct, but stay close together is incorrect. Next, they lose energy. No, they do not lose energy, but they do move further apart. They lose energy. No, and they stay close together. No. So the correct option for this question is option A. Question two. Which method should be used to separate a mixture of two liquids? Crystallization? No, this is used to separate a soluble salt from its aqueous solution. So electrolysis, this is used to separate two different elements that form a compound. Filtration, this is used to separate a precipitate from a solution. And fractional distillation, Yes, fractional distillation is a method used to separate two liquids mixed together. Therefore, option D is the correct option for this question. Question three, lead to iodide is insoluble in water. Lead to iodide is made by adding aqueous lead to nitrate to aqueous potassium iodide. Which pieces of apparatus are needed to obtain solid lead to iodide from 20 cm cube of aqueous lead to nitrate. So we would need a beaker to contain the filtrate. A weighing balance is not needed. A Bunsen burner is not needed. We do not need to weigh or heat anything. A filter funnel is needed to separate the residue and the filtrate. And a measuring cylinder is needed to measure 20 cm cube of aqueous lead to nitrate. So the apparatus that is needed are apparatus shown by 1, 4 and 5, which makes option C the correct option for this question. Question 4. The chromatogram of substance S is shown. Some distances W, X, Y, and Z are labeled on the diagram. How is the RF value of substance S calculated? So we have a value represented by Y, which is the distance traveled by substance S from the baseline, which will be taken as the numerator. And we have the line represented by X, which is the distance traveled by the solvent from the baseline till the solvent front, which is represented by X. So this is the formula that will be used to measure the RF value for substance S. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option C. Question five. Which row describes isotopes of the same element? Number of protons should be the same. So this eliminates options A and B. And number of neutrons should be different. Eliminating option D and making option C the correct option for this question. Question 6. Which row describes the structure of the positive ion in sodium chloride? So the positive ion is Na positive, which is made from Na which has a proton number of 11 and a nucleon number of 23. So it should have 11 protons, eliminating options C and D. It should have 23 minus 11 will give us a value of 12. It should have 12 neutrons. And since it has a positive charge, so it will have 11 minus 1, which is equal to 10 electrons, eliminating option A and making option B the correct option for this question. Question seven, which statement about copper, diamond, and silicon four oxide is correct?
कॉपर एंड सिलिकन फोर ऑक्साइड हैव सिमिलर इलेक्ट्रिकल कंडक्टिविटी नो कॉपर कंडक्ट्स इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड सिलिकन फोर ऑक्साइड डज नॉट इन डायमंड द कार्बन आइटम्स आर कोवेलेंटली बॉन्डेड एज फ्लैट शीट्स दैट इज ट्रू फॉर ग्रेफाइड नॉट डायमंड इन सिलिकन फोर ऑक्साइड द सिलिकन एंड ऑक्सीजन आइटम्स आर कोवेलेंटली बॉन्डेड एज फ्लैट शीट्स नो दे आर कोवेलेंटली बॉन्डेड एज अ थ्री डायमेंशनल हेक्सागॉन and the structure of copper includes a lattice of positive ions yes it will have a lattice of positive ions in a sea of delocalized electrons so option d is the correct option for this question question 8 an oxide of nitrogen has the following composition by mass 30.4% nitrogen and 69.6% oxygen it has a relative molecular mass of 92 what is the molecular formula of the oxide of nitrogen so the first thing we do is we divide these percentages by the ar of nitrogen which is 14 and the ar of oxygen which is 16 so we will calculate 30.4 divided by 14 will give us 2.17 and 69.6 divided by 16 will give us a value of 4.35 so we divide these by the smaller value which is 2.17 so we end up with a whole number value of 1 for nitrogen and a whole number value of 2 for oxygen so the empirical formula is equal to no2 and the empirical formula mass will be equal to 46 so now the molecular formula mass is 92 so 92 upon 46 will give us a value of 2 therefore no2 multiplied by this factor 2 will give us the molecular formula of the compound which is equal to n2o4 and this makes option d the correct option for this question question 9 calcium carbonate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid according to the equation shown 10 grams of calcium carbonate is reacted with 100 cm cube of 1 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid the following statements are made 1.2 dm cube of carbon dioxide is formed 5.6 grams of calcium chloride is formed 4.8 grams of carbon dioxide is formed and no calcium carbonate is left when the reaction is completed which statement about the reaction are correct so in order to find these out we need to calculate the moles of calcium carbonate that were reacting which is equal to 10 which is the mass divided by 100 which is the mr and this gives us 0.1 moles of calcium carbonate that are reacting for the concentration of hcl we have 1 mole per dm cube so 1 mole is present in 1000 cm cube how many moles would be present in 100 cm cube so this will give us a value of 100 upon 1000 into 1 which will give us a value of 0.1 now since the molar ratio is 1 is to 2 so if the moles of hcl is 0.1 then the moles of cso3 that would react would be 0.05 half of 0.1 and the moles of calcium chloride form would be 0.05 the moles of carbon dioxide produced would be 0.05 and the moles of h2o produced would be 0.05 now to find out the statement values whether they are correct or not so for one it is 1.2 dm cube of carbon dioxide is formed so 1.2 dm cube of carbon dioxide would mean 24 dm cube multiplied by the number of moles 0.05 which will give us a value of 1.2 dm cube so statement 1 is correct for calcium chloride we will multiply 0.05 into the mr of calcium chloride which should be 40 plus 71 which is 111 which will give us a value of 5.55 grams so this is almost equal to 5.6 so statement 2 is also correct statement 3 says 4.8 grams of carbon dioxide is formed so moles of carbon dioxide is 0.05 
and MR of carbon dioxide would be 12 plus 32 giving us 44. So this will give us a mass value of 4.4 grams and not 4.8. So statement 3 is incorrect. And for the last one, no calcium carbonate is left from when the reaction is completed. Out of the 0 0.1 mole of calcium carbonate, we only have 0 0.05 mole reacting. So the amount left would be 0 0.05. So this statement is also incorrect. Since statements 1 and 2 are correct, option A is the correct option for this question. Question 10. Which substance is not produced during the electrolysis of concentrated aqueous sodium chloride? So we have at the cathode production of hydrogen gas. And at the anode, we have production of chlorine gas. And the solution left behind would be Na positive and OH negative ions producing NaOH. So the options are chlorine is produced, hydrogen is produced, sodium is not produced, sodium hydroxide is produced. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option C.